So tell us, what exactly is Midas looking to accomplish with their emergence of the Reputation Power uh, initiative? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think, I'm not going to get the year right, but a few years ago, um, Vitalik published this paper through the Ethereum Foundation about soulbound tokens and essentially this idea of needing something to represent like the human piece of, of, of blockchain, of Web3. And mm -hmm. um, when we started thinking at Midas about how to make blockchain accessible and individual centric, something that could serve just the individual user, but also um, companies, because we're all also building out like corporate structures in a blockchain space. Um, how can we support this lack of identity? Um, when, when we think about things like lending, you know, that getting a loan yep. is an incredible financial tool. And for so many people, it's inaccessible. And in DeFi, there's that socio-political or geographic barriers is gone now. Like, you know, you don't have to qualify, but typically you have to be over collateralized. And that is a mm -hmm. huge barrier for a lot of people. And so the, the idea of reputation power is essentially that your on-chain achievements, collaborations, um, any work that you do, your participation in governance, um, your contributions to a DAO, all of these things can be minted in a non-transferable NFT. So essentially you're like, hey, I am who I say I am. Um, and then we have a vision for eventually maybe this being some system that could support under collateralized lending or um, even like an on-chain sort of resume in a sense. Like yeah. you don't have to check my references because they're minted in this NFT that was is distributed to me from this DAP that I worked with, you know? So that's kind of what we're hoping to, to build the infrastructure for people to build community and for, to establish the work that they do and the contributions they make to the space. Excellent, Ashley. That, that really is a very forward-thinking uh, application that, that, that Midas is putting out there. Because community, in, in one sense, it can be built within an anonymous sphere. I mean, as we see DeFi's grown over the past you know, five years or so, um, into something that that's really is uh, one of the forefront, uh, one of the, excuse me, leading edges of finance. Uh, yet at the same time, in order for communities to move beyond just money, actually go into decentralized art, go into communication, go into uh, information, all these things that blockchain can facilitate, but really haven't, at least in my opinion, been overly leveraged for. There has to be some sort of either semi-anonymous or non-anonymous um, soul, soul binding of that information to a wallet address that demonstrates that, listen, I am, I am reputable, I am engaged, I, I am reliable. This, These are my, are my credentials for, for accomplishing that. Um, and you, you spoke a bit about the emergence of new technologies for uh, under collateralized lending. Uh, and I can actually see this really opening up the potential for a gig economy that's even more uh, spread out than, than at present. What, what exciting opportunities do you see arising from the reputation power that Midas is launching? Yeah, I think like the idea that, um, you know, for me joining the Web3 space, I had no idea really what I was getting into and that there were so many people who got, I didn't know what a DAO was and how people were getting <laughs> paid for contributing to all these different projects. And then um, very soon after I joined the team, I went to ETH Denver and um, I met people who were working on so many projects and they traveled full time. And all they did was like, do the things that made them excited. And I was like, wow, this is a space where people can be rewarded for their unique gifts and their like individual strengths without having to fit into this box of a job description and reputation power to me offers like a backbone for that so not only can you come in and say here's what I like to do this is what I can offer to your team without feeling like you know I'm in this nine to five full-time commitment kind of thing yep. um, but now here are my credentials like this is these are all the projects that I've contributed to. These are my strengths. You don't have to trust some resume that I've put up or these references that I've hand selected that you can call and it's probably my cousin. Um, so <laughs> that's a big thing for me as far as like the gig economy goes is like now people can really leverage what they're doing in this space to establish some level of credibility. Certainly. You know, it, it, it's funny that whole uh, using your, your cousin, your cousin as a reference. I, I've, I've never done that. I never had to, thankfully, <laughs> but I'm sure people have. And a lot of people in the space talk about kind of uh, institutions and enterprise and the, the real world coming into blockchain. But what I see the uh, reputation power initiative actually doing is, is taking something from within blockchain and potentially reaching outwards. 
is if we can change our mindset about what reliability, about what honesty is, um, one, of course, taking somebody's word for it, but also having the credentials to back it up or demonstrating that you don't have the credentials that you're, that you're purporting really is going to change the way that uh, collaboration and that employment do work in the future because the world's only getting more virtual. Everybody's beginning to come online in some form or fashion. So having something that can demonstrate credibility is going to be tremendously revolutionary. So great luck to you guys uh, with this. Yeah, and- thanks. We're excited about, I think like even individual companies could, the, just thinking about the way that they could reward their community for being, you know, active in what they do. And they can decide like in our system, you know, individual apps can decide like, oh, I want to place more value on governance or I want to place more value on transactions. So they can kind of create their own culture with this system, which is really cool because not only does that like benefit the user, but now I feel like people who are wanting to build something bigger, they have tangible tools to say, this is, this is what we value and here's how we can support you in contributing to that. Absolutely. That, that, is, that is another fantastic point. When you're able to actually differentiate, differentiate value and have a kind of a scale of incentivization across one protocol, all of a sudden you really do change the approach that people have from that. Because as the either centralized directors or as the DAO begin to take over and direct the emergence uh, of a platform, you can actually shift your attention on the specific things. And like you said, reward and incentivize that to, um, to bring about the type of motivation that's necessary. And that can really hypercharge the growth of a DAO when you can differentiate uh, vectors of growth. And that, that kind of leads into something else that, that Midas is, is uh, very well known for. And it's a very exciting opportunity, which is the DAC ideology. Could you kind of explain to that for people who aren't familiar with it, what the DAC uh, represents and how that differs from DAOs? Sure. Yeah. So um, we all, if, if you're unfamiliar with a DAO, if you're coming to this like brand new Web3, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. And essentially it's just a group of people coming together to work for a common cause, just like any other organization. Um, yes. But a lot of like the procedures are governed by smart contracts. Like a lot of the um, internal mechanisms can be, can be governed that way. Um, But with any human organization, there are issues, right? So like Mm -hmm. if you've ever been a part of a DAO, you've likely experienced some inefficiencies either with like apathy, you know, people's general excitement for something kind of falls off or there's like a lack of knowledge or um, the governance structure is less than ideal. I mean, people might hold a lot of tokens and be able to have a lot of say and, you know, governance decisions, but maybe they don't necessarily have the expertise to be the ones to make that call. Um, yeah. There's no real way to like assign permission and role-based things. Um, yeah. And so a DAC is a decentralized autonomous corporation. And essentially the idea is that we keep this under the underlying principle of a DAO, the decentralization, the inclusivity, the accessibility, um, but we add in functionality for kind of like regular enterprise functions. So Mm -hmm. um, being able to put the right person in charge of the right things, um, having functions like human resources or accounting or financial reporting, the things that you would need to be transparent, but maybe take off a lot of resources um, can now be easily done on chain. Uh, So you can still customize what you're doing in blockchain, but still keep, I mean, to be honest, some things are not necessarily served by being on a public ledger. So it's nice (laughs) to, to be able to say like, this is going to go here and this is going to be separate, you know? 